This is a graphical solution for square root, cube root, other larger roots, logarithms, and distribution of prime numbers in relation to the Riemann hypothesis. This project is designed by me, Kuhn Swanston. Now here's a graphical solution for square root. Pay close attention here because I'm not using a pointer, but this is the graph of y is equal to x squared. Now if you want to find what the square root is, you can use this graph in the next slide. This graph was reflected in the line y is equal to x. If you find a percentage, for example 734.76934, and you divide by 1, and 8 zeros and you get 73.5% well instead of 73.5% because you you're using on the horizontal x-axis from 0 to 10 we use 7.35% not 7.35% but using the number 7.3 when you follow the arrow it will take you to up to the curve it will take you to 8.5 then we'll use some algebra to, which will bring it to 8500 zero, so that it will be a good estimation for 734.76934 and the actual square root is 8571.868758 if, if you increase that number by one additional digit we'll use 1 and 10 zeros and get 7.35 if you draw um, the 7.35 will become 0.735 if you follow that arrow and you go across the y-axis you get 2.7 but since we have a big number you use some algebra and you get 27000 and the actual result is 27106.62917 you can do a similar thing for x cubed to find the cube root you reflect it, this graph in the line y is equal to x and it will look something like this well all these graphs actually go through the point zero zero and you follow this fashion where you draw a line from the percentage you calculated to that curve and you go across to the y-axis and you get a cube root but you'll be using, when you're trying to find a percentage, it's different from x squared, so you'll be using numbers like 10, 1000, 1 million, and 1 billion. You're going up by those amounts. From the previous slides, we learned that we can find any root from a number value raised to any power. We use logarithm as an inverse function for the number 10 raised to the power of a certain number. Presently the log of 0 equals 1. Ignore that for my next slide. Well my next slide. Let's assume log 0 equals 0 and all values are positive. Therefore the curve does not cut the x-axis. Now this is a graph of 10 to the x. Now when you wanna if you want to find log, reflect this graph in the line y is equal to x. But when I say y is equal to x the line going from 0, 0 looks like y is equal to x, so you reflect it along that line. It will look something like that. So you use the percentages, you find the, percenta the percentages, and you go up to the, to the curve and across, and you get a log of the value. And you can find any log because that this curve is actually going to the point zero zero. It's not passing through one or anything like that. It's going to zero zero. So you can find a really small log or a really large log by multiplying by a scale. As, and, and that and you must use this curve between zero and ten. Don't extend the graph beyond ten because you will get a false value. Don't extend the graph below below Zero, zero. You also get a force by using it between 0 and 10. Once you find that value by drawing an arrow to the curve and across, once you get that value and you want to bring it to the right scale, you, you must use algebra. 
Prime numbers also have an infinite relationship. Using the same principles I worked for the graphs above will show that there is a definitive pattern for prime numbers. Watch my remaining slides to see my alternative to the Riemann hypothesis where my graph does not cut the x-axis. My graph when extended will pass through the coordinate 0, 0. So here are the first 27 prime numbers. And you see my curve is going down to the point 0, 0. Now you find in the inverse through the line y is equal to x. Well, before we before we reflect it, let's, this is uh, this is not a reflection. This is the first ten thousand prime numbers. So this is the nth prime number on the horizontal axis showing ten thousand numbers, and on the y-axis showing the prime numbers. This is the inverse, and the inverse, well, this graph, the horizontal side of the graph is, is not actually drawn exactly to scale, but the inverse should pass through 0, 0, or close to 0, 0, and the y-axis is showing the approximate n prime, so even from the percentages you calculate, and you get the approximate n prime. Now, you want to do it between 0, 0 and 10. You don't want to ex extend the graph beyond those values. If you want to get the, the value, a, 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 if you want to get a high value, you must use algebra to give you the right approximate value. This curve follows a, a relationship for all primes. So once you find a value in between 0 and 10, this uh, this curve magnified or decreased will map onto larger prime larger prime values so whatever number you have whatever number you get you find the percentage and from there on this graph you get the approximate prime number and then you multiply the scale for the number that you choose All graphs similar to y is equal to x will behave in a repetitive fashion for infinite values, which can be calculated by finding the inverse graph and taking their percentages to produce the inverse solution graphically. Therefore, distribution of prime numbers, square root, cube root, all other roots, and logarithm solve. My precise approximation is better than the Riemann hypothesis because all my values are positive for all infinite prime numbers. My approximation correctly maps all prime numbers.